Hi, this is Brent Croninger. I'm here to demonstrate uh, the J1850 VPW to CAN protocol translator. J1850 VPW is a legacy automotive protocol that is used ex uh, on mostly GM vehicles and is exclusively the only protocol used on this 2002 Chevy Silverado. I'm going to translate that protocol using my Explorer 16 development board and protocol interface to communicate with a Bullydog GT, which is an external OBD2 device that will communicate only through CAN. The Explorer 16 development board is being used because the full implementation um, was not able to be done uh, in the short amount of time uh, as a standalone product on a printed circuit board. But I did build a my own printed circuit board with the J1850 and CAN transceivers. The Explorer 16 will have a bootloader on it so that when programming it, we'll program the bootloader with the ICV3 and then after that it'll communicate through the UART to the serial port which communicates to a PC that will load um, firmware updates. As you can see there's no LEDs lit. Um, it is in the bootloader mode right now. So it uses the UART module for the bootloading which can also communicate with the SPI flash for reading the flash memory off. It then uses, th via these wires, has control lines to the J1850 and CAN transceivers. It uses the input capture to receive the J1850 VPW messages and it uses I.O. pins um, to bit bang the J1850 VPW transmit messages. It then uses the enhanced CAN module to, you, to transmit and receive CAN messages. This all goes, those control lines all go through this ribbon cable to my transceiver board which has the CAN and J1850 transceivers. The transceiver board then splits off and has a female OBD2 plug that would connect to the external device, the CAN communications, and then it has a male OBD2 plug here which would connect to the vehicle which would facilitate the VPW communication. So the first piece of demonstration is the bootloader through the UART. As you can see, all I need to do now is through MPLabX I will program the bootloader. Now that I've programmed the bootloader in, I no longer need the ICD3. As you can see here, there's no LEDs lit. It's in boot mode and has no program memory. The bootloader, the way it works is the, uh, when powered up, the microcontroller runs in boot mode. It gives about 14 seconds to load a new program and then it will jump into the user code. Right now there's no user code. So first, we'll go to our app, which communicates through the serial port to program a firmware version. I'm going to program through COM1 at 115.2K. Final version, we'll go version four first. So it's programming the device, it says it's done. I then use the LEDs to bit encode the version number. As you can see this is version 4. If I reset the device it goes into initially into boot mode. It has a progress bar of LEDs that gives you the amount of time that you have to run a new bootload application to load a different firmware version. Once these expire it jumps into user code and begins functioning uh, in, in normal operation. So as you can see it'll expire show version 4. So we'll go ahead and reset and we'll load ver version 5 to demonstrate. Done. As you can see, it's now in version 5. So if I reset the device, it'll go through the whole setup in the boot so currently in bootloader mode. Once it's out of bootloader mode, it'll go into version 5 of the user code. So that facilitates the USB updates um, and it utilizes the SPI flash or it can access the SPI flash through this application as well as write, reading and writing the program memory. So now we're finished with the serial cable. For the next part of this process I'm going to use an OBD2 breakout box. Right now it's communicated to a power supply. 
So I can power up the uh, the Bully Dog GT to demonstrate via a OBD2 protocol analyzer, the um, uh, NeoVi from Intrepid CS, and it'll display the OBD2 protocols on my PC. So I'll go ahead and plug in the Bully Dog GT to the breakout box. power it up, and then we can view that the Bully Dog GT only transmits CAN messages. Here you can see the Bully Dog GT powering up, initializing communication, and you can see on my uh, vehicle spy from Intrepid CS, the CAN messages. HS CAN, high speed CAN, which is 500K, those are messages being transmitted just by the Bully Dog GT. As you can see here also, the gauge has four gauge values on the left, all displaying zero. From top to bottom, it's throttle, RPM, coolant, and battery voltage. It's receiving no communication with the vehicle. So if I stop that, unplug my power supply, now I can connect to the vehicle to demonstrate that the vehicle only communicates through JT50 VPW. So now my breakout box will be connected, and I'll unplug the GT, will be connected to the GT's unplug, just to the vehicle in the protocol analyzer. If I turn on the key, You can see that the vehicle will chatter, but its chatter is only in J1850 VPW. If I were to plug in the uh, GT now, you'll see CAN and VPW transmitted. The purpose of this is just to show that um, the vehicle only uses J1850 and the GT only uses CAN. So now, with the GT connected, you can still see the VPW messages coming across. And then eventually, once the GT boots up, now you can see some high-speed CAN messages. If I take it out of scroll mode, you can see the messages updating. Once again, you can see, with just the GT plugged into the vehicle, there's nothing on the gauges. So now, I will connect the protocol analyzer. In this first step, I'll take the male OBD2 plug, plug it into the breakout box. Now, that will, on the protocol analyzer, only show J1850 messages. If I plug in the GT, it will begin, the protocol analyzer will translate the GT messages and we'll only see VPW from the vehicle. So this is analyzing the bus on the vehicle. We'll only see VPW messages. Once the GT powers up, we should see quite a few more. If I power down the GT, these 6C messages will go away. Those are, what are what's monitoring data on the vehicle. Again, looking at the GT, you can see now, uh, the bottom two, I have a, a coolant temperature of 132 degrees and a battery voltage of 11.5. The next demonstration will be to display the CAN only messages. So what I'm doing here is I'm un unplugging the breakout box from the vehicle and I'm going to plug the protocol analyzer directly into the vehicle. I will then interface the breakout box with the the female OBD2 plug of the analyzer, which will in turn give, give me access to the CAN messages that are 
uh, sent between the diagnostic device and the protocol analyzer. Unfortunately, without a standalone device, it's difficult to get everything in place, but we'll give it a go. Power the Explorer 16. So now I can also. So now the setup is the breakout box is plugged in to the protocol analyzer's female plug. The male plug is plugged into the vehicle. Breakout box goes to our protocol analyzer. And if we plug in the GT, we'll see the CAN messages directly from the GT and the responses of converting J1850 to CAN from the protocol analyzer. So here you can see only high speed CAN messages. And once again, the GT will be displaying coolant temperature, and battery voltage. For the final piece of the demonstration, we'll plug in just the, the uh, protocol analyzer and dev board and GT, or protocol translator, excuse me, minus the breakout box and the analyzer to show a full demonstration. Now, for the full demonstration, I have the Explorer 16 plugged in, powered up, plugged into my uh, transceiver board, which then has the Bully Dog GT plugged into the, the female connector, and the translator board goes to the dev board to the vehicle. So now I just have my protocol translator connected directly to the vehicle, interface with the Bully Dog GT. If I start the vehicle, we should see some RPMs. On the top is throttle position, the second down is RPM coolant temperature, and then battery voltage. Try to hold it around 1200 RPM. So that's the completion of the protocol analyzer. The protocol translator, excuse me. Connects to the GT. To the G, to the to the dev board via this interface. Vehicle OBD2 plug to the protocol translator, which then goes to the female plug, which goes to the GT. all controlled through the Explorer 16 board. It's 33F microcontroller using input capture and I.O. toggling for J1850 in the ECAN module for CAN transmission and reception.